Yeah, it's just uh, we're not working with white guys. And I go, I, I hit record, and I go, could you say? I, go, and I doubt that's how that went down. By the way. A little slower for the people in the back. He goes, we're not working with white guys. Then play it. Then play it. What? You have a recording? Play it. I want to hear it. Now, this may come as a surprise to some of you, but I have seen Lady Ballers. Not like I've talked about that on three different videos. But anyway, I decided to do another review of a review of Lady Ballers because it's really good for the algorithm. So we're going to do it. We're going to look at Tim Pool's review of Lady Ballers from a month ago. He says it's the first real comedy movie in years. Now, I've seen a few comedy movies, not a lot, but I don't know what he means by real. So I, I'm not going to say that he's wrong. I just don't know what he means. So let's see what he means because I'm very interested in his take. Normal people become terrified of my, uh, in, when you ask for Alec Gunter at home, you get Tim Pool. Uh, so he's kind of he's kind of like my discount uh, doppelganger. Criminals. Shots were just fired. Police just came out and told us, and we're headed there right now. They become terrified of their own government. Juana Man was <laughs> that movie. It was good. That movie. I was never. Funny. I've never Wait, seen it. On. What was this thing at the beginning? I, I kind of just ignored it. Okay, it's just advertising for Timcast. I'm never going to see it. I remember I, I'm like when did <laughs> evil Alec Gunter like, be like something. It's better than Shawshank Redemption. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> what's, it, what's it? What's it about? Do you want to remember? It's that? about. You know, I've never seen it. It's about a guy that pretends to be a girl so he can play. In the, he's well, an NBA player. And he's, oh, and he gets I heard canceled. It. I heard and then right. He starts he, playing he, the he like, Yeah, you know the 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 movie they ripped off completely and obviously. What does he do? He like he like hits somebody or something. I forget why he got in trouble, but he got suspended, and then he still wanted to play. Yeah, so. they're like you're suspended indefinitely, and he's like, "What do I do? I know." And then he puts on a wig and like fake <laughs> boobs, and then it's like the gag is he's crushing the women. He's dunking Whoa. and super good. Well, that's but, so but funny, the, the bro. The premise there was he's cheating, he's yeah. lying, right? And I understand. Yeah, because it was a different time, and we had a different understanding of what it means to be trans. There aren't people putting on wigs and going and competing in basketball against women and to the extent that they are it's not officially uh, allowed or mandated or not mandated uh, uh the other word different word you know what i meant said that that's a similar premise in a Endorsed. way but lady ballers it's the political of you can be a woman if you want yeah and so with juana man no one knows he's a man with lady ballers they're just a bunch of males being like we're women now and then right and then seeing the crowd be confused oh, that's the difference. How do we, are we supposed to support this or not Inevitably, the crowd does come out and, in, you know, in droves. This is one of the guys who was in the movie, by the way, uh, transvestite extraordinaire. I forget what his name is. I don't care enough. You know, I, I actually don't care enough. Fuck it. First, nobody's there watching the games. And but then, at the end, they do start. To oh, we start them. filling the, the stadiums and we actually <laughs> well, filled the stadiums with with. Uh, you know what I do care about? I care about his appearance. So I'm going to look up his name anyway. Who is this guy? There he is. OK, no, Tyler Fisher. Let's talk about Lady Ballers. Why did you decide to do this movie? I owe them a lot of money. Day so we have an idea. Being a girl athlete, I've already eaten a whole pint of pistachio ice cream, given up on parallel parking twice, reread Sense and Sensibility, and started washing down benzodiazepines with rose. <laughs> I love being a girl. How'd I do, ladies? In Hollywood, it's usually SAG, so it's a union. So there's very strict rules. This, there were no rules, no mandates, and they're not doing the whole diversity, race, and gender, none of that crap. There's so many things that Hollywood has to reverse now. You need a certain amount of X, Y, and Z to get an Oscar Okay, now. I really don't care. We'll, we'll get it on Tim Pool. But you guys got the idea. He got very into his role, I must say. Uh, Tyler Fisher, cross-dressing extraordinaire, everybody. With extras. We're some, of them were, some of them didn't know what the movie was about, <laughs> and we had a protest. No! no. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the extras protest? Oh, yeah, we had someone stand up and protest during... Gotta say, his name is as bland as he is, by the way. During the, the film shoot. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm against this. You yeah, know? yeah. And, but this was Nashville, right? And these were like Daily Wire fans coming out. So they just shut. They were like, fuck you. <laughs> wow. Shut up. Yeah. Oh, was my. it like a gender oh, fluid they lesbian? The lesbian oh, they owned the lens. I like, think so. Oh. Yeah. And then every day. The they'd be, trust or protest. I'm going to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was so funny because one person was like, this is not okay. And everyone's like, shut the fuck up. Yo, and that's amazing. they just amazing. dragged them out. And then every day we had protest outside. No. Yeah, yeah. They literally had internal conflict because they were not honest with people that they hired about what they were doing. And then when those people realized, they quit, just so you all know. Every day really shooting? Pathetic. How yeah. did we not After know this that? movie was coming out? Yeah. yeah, I don't know, I don't know. And then we sent out, uh, uh, Billy Ray played a, a yeah. newscaster. We sent her out in character 
to interview these uh, the protesters. Did that Is it make in the movie? movie? Uh, they, no, it should have. It should have. Oh man. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold back it so much should've. after hearing that you your ex just protested you. <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. I don't see the point in protesting this shit anymore. They're just looking for attention. They're looking for uh, video grabs. Like, I don't know, just ignore them. Just pretend they don't exist until they force their way into your lives and then point out that they're forcing their way into your lives. You know, like with the laws, and obviously you can't ignore the laws, right? So go out and protest those. But protesting a movie, like how much money did it make? Here, let's take a look. I never even looked at that. 0.2 million, that's 200,000. Matt has made over $1.6 million from ads for the Daily Wire movie. That's insane. <laughs> During your movie. <laughs> and if you've ever been an extra on a movie set. Point is, I just don't see the point in protesting this shit. If it's a law, protest it, obviously. But if it's something as inconsequential as a movie that literally nobody saw or cares about, forget it. Just forget it. Extras, I think they're just as important as the main actors, you know? So that that, that kind of makes it's sense. A tough like, gig, man. Yeah, well, but like, I'm just saying, I yeah. can see somebody standing up like, I'm an, I'm going to be a future actor. Like, I'm standing up for, you know, trans rights. Like, you and know. nobody cares. No, we're doing a comedy. They're definitely in the red. The fact that they have not been bragging about how much money the movie made should tell you everything you need to know. Hey, movie, dude, calm down. <laughs> yeah. I was funny because I was, I was just watching It's Always Sunny yesterday, the old season episode where... Oh, uh, yes, the uh, conservative show, extra, Always Sunny. And she's playing a corpse in a Serbian genocide movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. But she keeps trying to, like, pose for the <laughs> I camera. remember that the one. Agent. I love that. You know, I was actually, yeah. it's funny we say this. I was in an ex, I was an extra in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia in the episode. You can see me well, where it's Frank's up? brother. But that is true, though. Well, you're in, you're, you're, I was actually in an episode of It's Always Sunny. And I was in what? an episode of The Office. Yeah, what? both of them. When I first, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First moved to L.A. Let me, let me explain. I, uh, I was an extra. I didn't have a job. I an moved extra? To Featured oh, okay. extra? Well, yeah, in both of them. I was, Once again, failed actor. There you go. I was a featured extra. I'm like doing a uh, fake cocaine. Stop saying, don't say you were in Always Sunny. Like, okay, yes, I get it. It's cool to say. It's a cool party trick, whatever. I get it. But that's very misleading, man. You were in one episode of Always Sunny as an extra. Shut the fuck up. Get out of here, you loser. Pain and loser. I'm at this gay bar. I'm in. And, and, and it's always Did sunny. Did I tell you guys Pain? it was an Always Sunny? Oh! Yeah, that was a Frank's Brothers episode. And then, Frank's brother. And then type in this. You'll Probably see didn't me even fucking talk to the main type, cast. Go to the office and type in Michael Scott's last scene, and you'll see me standing next to Michael Scott. But my point is, I didn't have a job, so I moved to L.A., and my buddy's like, you should go to Central Casting. Then I worked as an extra for like four or five months, and then I got a job as a production assistant on some Food Network shows, and, you know, it just kind of... Oh, so for some Food Network, you know, Food Network. Okay, buddy. Okay. Well, was, just say you're a failed Friday's actor commercial. next I gotta, time. I gotta, it's I, easier. I gotta go watch that later. And, and we're gonna like sit there yeah. and wait Frank's and be like, brother. there he is. Did you I'll sneak on? I feel like you snuck No, I was on. on. <laughs> no, I was casting. Well, I, this is the thing. People Damn. don't realize too. Okay. Is if you look young, there's they don't hire, they don't want to have kids on set. So it's yeah. called 18. Today if you I feel young. Oh, yeah. younger yeah. than 18. Gay. Um, and so I got all these high school rules. So like, I didn't even know anybody. And all of a sudden, but you made like a hundred bucks a day, literally. And after taxes, yeah. it was like 80 something. Um, so it I don't know what it was for, but either. it was cool to go on the set. And that's where I met people. And then I ended up getting jobs later on from right on. And then saying, something happened. Jobs to like what? They must've been very lucrative, buddy. If the, if the highlight of your acting career is playing an extra for one, one episode on always sunny, I got news for you. Probably time to find some other work your brain and you turned into this and then yeah i just I got, <laughs> I got in a bad car accident i got amnesia and now Wait, i don't really? even know who i am drank the coffee that's what it yeah is. that's what it was that yeah. cast oh, brew coffee well, we're gonna be filming a cast brew commercial with with uh alex and if tyler wants sure. to sure extra yeah. caffeinated we're gonna we're just, go insane we're just goofing off well let's go back to the let's go let's 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 talk about the movie and stuff though i mean hearing that uh you know jeremy's saying nobody wants to be in it did you have any concerns no i don't care were you, were you canceled already I don't or something? Care. Yeah, I I call it like pre- You cannot act the way that he acted in that movie and act disaffected in a Tim Pool cast. You can't do that. A Tim cast. Tim, the, 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 the Tim, whatever it is. Canceled. -canceled. I, was, I was kind of, Tiffany, Piffy, uh, there was an effort to prevent my career from taking off. You know, I'll give you a couple examples. One, I was fired from an acting agent for being white. What? They told me in an email. Yeah. Right? This is a big agency. This stuff's been happening for so long. Uh -huh. Um. I would constantly lose I'm sure. commercial campaigns, jobs. They would, I would get cast, and then then they'd go, you know what? The CEO wants a you know dyslexic, black, trans, yeah. ambidextrous one. Oh, I'm sure that happened, man. You know, I get emails like that all the time. Honestly, it's yeah. amazing that I even have a job, and it's also amazing that I'm the best fucking person. Sorry, the best paid fucking person at my job. That's not a brag. That's literally a result of me being a white man as a nurse. I was thinking, like, this is not okay. Yeah. But you couldn't talk about it. I would try to tell well, someone, they go, well, your time is up. And then, um, so I quit acting for three years. Young. 
Wow. Because I let me, let, sorry, let me clarify. I am an RN, which puts me above most of them. I am young, which puts me above most of them. But I feel like also being at least a man, I don't know about white these days, but at least being a man would certainly put me at a pay grade above them. I was brought into these big agencies. They would see me go, you're going to be on SNL. You're going to be a star. And then they go, it's not time for white guys. I'm sorry. It's not your time. That happened to me at, uh, at Vice, actually. Really? White boy summer's yeah, so, over. Uh, when not I gonna... started there, basically my negotiation was, look, I do live coverage, but I don't do documentary stuff. I need someone <clears throat> to help me with the other side of things. So if I go out and live stream this big news event, can you send a camera guy to film me doing oh, it? Oh, yeah, true. Make a doc no, thank you, Transitory, in the chat. No, I'm sure. Uh, Transitory uh, openly stated. I, apparently, I was wrong because Transitory is a trans woman. Gets all kinds of requests from jobs all the time. She she just can't keep up with all of them, really. And honestly, she has her pick, uh, cream of the crop, really. And, and she makes millions. She's a millionaire, and she should donate to me more is actually uh, what's going on there. Make a mini doc that mm -hmm. captures, and then we have the live coverage at the same time. It's like two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. They said yes. And then eventually, um, I, I do think it's fair to say I had no experience doing doc stuff. Sure. And so I'm not going to pretend like I was the greatest person for the job. But that was basically, look, I'll give you groundbreaking news coverage. You get me these docs. And then I was explicitly told by a guy, look, you know, they want diverse cast. And yeah, they're racist. And I'm it's like, like, <laughs> I'm like my, friend, my friend, I am mixed race. And they said, doesn't matter. You don't look enough. Yeah. And then this is crazy. When in acting, that's literally true. Listen, I don't really agree that, you know, there should be no racial component when it comes to <clears throat> almost anything except acting. I feel like that's important, right? Like if there's roles that you need certain demographics for, then you need those demographics. If you're not that, you know, you can't play a, I'm sorry, Tim Pool, you cannot play a slave in the civil war movie. It's not happening. When I worked at fusion, they said the same thing. They, they did this, uh, uh, political forum. It was called the black and brown forum. And they brought in their top talent and then got an outside talent, even though I was one of their top guys. And I asked him, I was like, is there a reason you guys went for outside talent? They got, they got a, a black guy, a, fa a famous comedian. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, it's the black and brown forum, right? And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm mixed race. I'm like, I'm part Asian. They're like, do not, do I not get to say? And they're like, you look too white. Have a nice day. It yes. really doesn't matter. It, it yeah. all matters on what you look like. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. If it's, you... it's funny you guys say this, and I don't even know if you've known this, Tim, but I actually worked for the team. Also, by the way, I agree that there's like a lot of liberal overhead with like, uh, you know, representation or whatever. I agree that sometimes it's a little silly. And they'll like pull you, like they do have like weirdo office meetings for like diversity and inclusion and shit that don't ultimately mean anything. I agree with all of that. But, you know, when it comes to acting, you do kind of need diversity in your roles. I agree that we need that. Like sometimes you got to force a little bit of diversity when it comes to like media, pop culture. Okay. You have to, you know why? Because those demographics exist in your population. I'll also add this. There is not nearly enough Hawaiian popular uh, uh, representation in Hollywood. And I've talked about this before. They get Dwayne, the rock Johnson and Vin Diesel. Anytime they need a Hawaiian guy, it's Dwayne, the rock Johnson, or sometimes Vin Diesel. If they're feeling a little spicy, they never, ever, ever get an actual Hawaiian person besides Dwayne Johnson, who I don't even think is Hawaiian Dwayne Johnson. And I don't think Vin Diesel is maybe I'm wrong about Vin Diesel, but I'm pretty sure that he plays Hawaiians. But anyway, anytime that they need anybody who looks like they're from a tropical Island, who do they go to Dwayne, the rock Johnson? And it's weird. You know, you show cheaters. Yeah. For eight years, we catch people cheating on their husbands and wives. I signed an NDA, so I can only say so much uh, about it, but it's a reality show, you know, so you know how that goes, uh, how real those are. But my point is, um, I was, the, the host was a guy by the name of Clark Gable. His grandfather was Clark Gable from Gone with the Wind, mm -hmm. the famous actor. So wait, you participated in a show where you catch people cheating on their husbands and wives? How does that work? Like, if you suspect that you're... So wait, it would work like catfishing, right? Like the catfisher show. If you suspect that your husband's cheating on you, do you, like, chase him down? Or do you, like, do you like try to seduce him? Do you, like... Is it, like, entrapment? We're, like, we, we're going to get our sexiest broad here, and we're going to sit her down in front of him for a business meeting, and, you know, just have her seduce him. And then right before they're about to take their clothes, they're like, caught! You've, you're on cheaters! Ha <laughs> ha! You're on cheaters! Uh... He died of a fentanyl overdose. Literally, he bought, he had, like, had a prescription for pain pills, ran out of them, so he... uh, Yeah, to catch a cheater, the, the one guy walks in. What's his face? On, to, catch, to catch a predator. And he's like, why don't you have a seat? Why don't you have a seat? Went and bought pills on the street, had fentanyl on it, t took two pills, died in bed with his wife, or his Wait, fiance. what happened? Hold up. He had, like, the actor by the name of Clark Gable. His grandfather was Clark Gable from okay. Gone with the Wind, mm -hmm. the famous actor. He died of a fentanyl overdose. Literally, he bought, he had like 
had a prescription for pain pills, ran out of them, so he went and bought pills on the street, had fentanyl on it, t- took two pills, died in bed with his wife or his fiance at the time and his the 19-month-old baby. Man, that's interesting. I wonder if there's any policy prescriptions that would help with that. And the guy that owns it is a guy named Bobby Goldstein. He loved me. He's like, Alex, you're going to be the next host of the show. I got in really good shape but right when we were going to about to start the new season. The show's distributed by Viacom, which owns CMT, VH1, and MTV. They said, you're not going to be the host anymore. You can still be one of the producers. We're going to go with this guy named Peter Guns, who's a black dude. And they they the reason why I know is an affirmative action hire. They made him change his name to Peter Panky because they didn't want to glamorize gun violence. Whoa. Yes. That was- I need to listen to that one more time guy named peter guns who's a black dude and they they the reason why i know is an affirmative action hire they made him change his name to peter panky because they didn't want to glamorize gun violence that's how they know that it was a wait that's how they know that it was a diversity hire no the whole okay so the whole idea behind diversity hires quote unquote to the extent that they exist and they certainly do but not you know it's not that big of a problem but you know the idea right is that you have an incompetent person of a race that is not white or a gender that is not male, etc., doing the same job that somebody of a male gender or white race could do, right? Or who looks white, I should say. And the only reason that you hired them is that they're black or Hispanic or Asian or gay or what have you or handicapped, and they do a worse job than you as a white person, right? That's the idea. Of course, we've we've come to realize that that's bullshit. Usually what happens is you have, like at worst, you'll have a white person and a black person who are exactly the same, who have exactly the same qualifications, right? If you're going to have a bias, affirmative action would dictate that that bias goes towards the black person because there's not as much representation of black people in certain careers because of his, uh, systemic racism. That needs to exist in a country that has a history of systemic racism you have to do that you have to cheat in the other direction okay if you have if, okay so if you have four people playing monopoly right and and three of them are allowed to play as normal and then one of them is told hey you can't move around the board until we move around three times we get three laps around the board and then you can start right and then later in the game you're allowed to start finally let's just say that you're like the person who's left out you're allowed to start You go around the board. Most of the properties are already eaten up. You might get like one of the small brown ones, right? The shit properties. But most of them are already gobbled up. You're not getting any properties. You're not winning this game. You are toast. The the best you have is like maybe some money. Oh yeah, no, no. I I take it back. Actually, you're going to start with zero dollars. You're going to start with... You need money in Monopoly. Let's say you start with a hundred dollars in Monopoly. A hundred dollars. The only properties you even have a chance in hell of purchasing is a brown property. A monopoly and you have to wait three turns before you can go around the board now you're allowed to go around the board and let's say you even buy one of those brown properties you get a, a three i believe you get a three and you buy a brown property that nobody else has gotten yet and then you say and then you lose you lose the game and then you say you know what that wasn't fair i don't think i i didn't have the same advantages that you guys had okay the appropriate response to that is you know what man you're right maybe next time we'll play fair but if you're a conservative you'll say oh what are you talking about man look we we let you go around the board we you even bought a property look how look that was lucky listen the, the, look look you, you or you you got a property we let you have that that was yours you had you had what you needed to win you could have won i'm i think that's fair that's what conservatives think that's how their brain works when in reality if it's been three turns and then somebody, let's say mom walks in and mom says, hey, this isn't fair. You guys need to let him go around the board three more times. And you know what? I'll even go a step further. Let's take a property from each of you and give it to this person. Take a property from each of you and give it to them and also give them $100 each. That's not very much. Just $100 each and give it to this person because you were very unfair to them. I think that's fine. It's cheating. It's it's literally cheating the other direction, but you have to do that. You know, too much avocado toast to win Monopoly. True. We're all socialists now. In the socialist version of Monopoly, it's very boring because everybody wins. Whoa. Yes, that was what? his name, Peter Guns. And so so what happened was I was so dejected. I was so sad. I was like, man, I'm about to make $140,000 just to me at the time to do this, you know, work six months out of the year. It was like awesome. I was so excited. Because I was actually coming, making close to that as a producer, but I had to work a lot harder than just be the host. But my point is, the Jance and Ray, a guy that worked, he's like, Alex, you should do your own podcast. You should do your own podcast. And that's what forced me to do it. And then I did a podcast for a year. Then I started going to city council meetings and I started confronting politicians. So for me getting canceled because this guy's going to city council meetings, just so you know, 
You can also do what he does. You can go to city council meetings and bring up your grievances. If you want to tell them about a sidewalk that's bad, or you want to tell them about not being able to afford your medication, you can just go there and tell them that. You can tell them, hey, I have ass cancer and I can't afford chemo. I'm just letting you guys know that I'm going to die of ass cancer in three years because I can't afford chemo. And this is happening under your jurisdiction. Thanks. Bye. Like you can do that. That is allowed. Because of affirmative action was a blessing in disguise. So basically, you know, you, you had this moment where you snapped and you're, you just, you're punching holes in walls and you're, ah, and this is what made Alex. I mean, this is like a, affirmative a, action. a, a super villain origin story, I suppose. Affirmative action. That's yeah. What it was, it yeah. was an affirmative, affirmative action movie. Yes. So, but it, like you the said, the same thing happened to me. That's essentially. What I'm saying, all I was bad so, things, it was, it was so much dominant. anger. Like I was just, uh, like what cornered. Was an affirmative action movie? What am I going to do? So it just all started pouring out, started making videos and all that stuff. But, but I have a lawsuit, uh, at, with the Supreme court for, Whoa. Another acting manager who called me and said they wanted to to represent me. And then he called me back and he said, um, we really want to work with you. We're no longer working with white men. No way. And I recorded ah! it. I, I, I was sitting at my podcast. Um, yeah, these poor guys. And I didn't think that was going to happen. Sitting here in the air conditioned, probably not enough, though. It probably still stinks. But the nonetheless, the air conditioned Timcast office. Uh, and afterwards, they'll probably go skating or uh, whatever else. They probably have a fucking uh, private jet. They fly out of the basement or something. These poor men. I was like, you know, he's like, we're gonna get you on Curb Your Enthusiasm. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna get you on SNL. The same old stick. And then he goes, yeah. Yeah, because a manager's supposed to tell you that shit. That's how they. You got tricked. All you're saying is that you got tricked. Okay, managers do that shit to get you in their clutches and take a little bit of your money. Okay, all you're admitting to is that you got duped. That's all that's happening here. Yeah, it's just uh, we're not working with white guys. And I go, I, I hit record, and I go, can you? Say, I go, can and you I say doubt that's how that went down. By the way, a little slower for the people in the back. He goes, we're not working with white guys. Then play it. Then play it. What? You have a recording? Play it. I want to hear it. That I said, is that company policy? And he goes, yeah. What about gay white guys? Wow. I don't know. Maybe. That's what I'm Gee, maybe if you wanted it that bad, maybe you should have been gay, huh? Say, I well, wonder if that, I, like, like I wonder gay. if you were gay. That you would've. should have just said, are, are you Slavic or Eastern European? Am I? Yeah, a little bit. Because I I, 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 the Coalition for Communities of Color says that Eastern Europeans are people of color. Really? Yeah, be, yeah, for real. They do. I was like, Wait, what happened? Yeah. Are people of color? Am I? Yeah, a little bit. Because I, 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 the Coalition for Communities of Color says that Eastern Europeans are people of color. I mean, it's sometimes, yeah, but like, it's just a matter of okay. So it, it's color. Color in society is a very social construct. Like, it, it doesn't have a finite set of rules. You know what I mean? Like, again, Hassan Piker is white passing. Okay, but if you look at his just his name, you can tell he's from Turkey and he's probably is uh, is uh, Muslim. Okay, which he, which he's an atheist, but he's like you know he's from an area full of Muslims and whatever. So you know he's from a Muslim family, but you can only tell that by his name. He's very white passing. If you saw him in public, you'd think he's a white guy. So like he wouldn't be like. They would probably tell him the same thing is, hey, listen, you're, you look too white for this role, you know? Hassan Piker. Oh, sorry. Right. Sock it to me. Hello, Tina. Really? Yeah. Be yeah. For real. They do. I was like, uh, but obviously, hey, I, yeah, yeah, I, I just like, no, I know I'm not white. I swear <laughs> to God, I've been pretending to be white. <laughs> He's a big mistake. I, <laughs> I was told white people have it all. So, yeah. So I've had a lawsuit pending with them for like two years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. And then I kind of got canceled for even pursuing that lawsuit you know I, I put it on twitter and then i got obliterated you're racist white guy screw so i'm like y you can't win you have to do your own thing do you have representation now did you find somebody oh yeah okay, I, yeah, yeah i got i got a lawyer two years ago we we um we're uh, i think waiting for the deposition at this point this is what happens with like moderate liberal individuals or i should say like classically liberal not necessarily like libertarian in terms of economics or anything, but you get these uh, regular folks. I think people kind of where we are politically, where we're like, hey man, you know, it doesn't matter what your race is. Oh yeah, no, they're just like regular people. Yeah, true. You know, we're all here to live. And regular work people, we want to be friends. like Tim Pool, who has a uh, skating park in his basement. Don't forget that. It's a really bad one from what I've heard. And then what happens is someone proposes a law and says, you shouldn't be able to- Tim Pool is disabled. If that's true, I don't care. Discriminate in the basis of race, religion, national origin. And- Good rational people are like, yeah, you shouldn't be able to do classical that. I mean, like, that, that, that. That's messed up that someone would fire someone. If somebody says they're classical liberal, that means they're a fascist and they don't have the balls to say it. They're pussies. For their race. The problem is the people who aligned with that view were secretly saying, we just- Yeah, and a compound view. abhorrent. And so what happens is you get this coalition of left liberal. Wait, what happened? Who just says they hate white people? The problem is the people who aligned with that view 
We're secretly saying we just we just hate white people. Wait, who's sec who's secretly saying that? Who? This just, this sounds like JQing. Yes. And so what happens is, you get this coalition of left liberal Not that that's saying hey, no more racism or whatever, however you want to describe it. And then as soon as that law is in place, the left says, okay, now no white people either. The two most prominent political streamers, Hassan Piker and Vosh, are both either white or white passing. Leftist streamers, I should say, political leftist streamers. They're either white or white passing. Like there's no planet on which white people, like leftists, like true socialist, leftist, progressive, whatever, say you can't be here because you're white. There are weirdos that do that, but they're not part of the broader leftist movement. And people who are part of the bro broader leftist movement, the socialist, uh, progressive movement, what have you, would exclude those people because they're dumbasses and they're hurting the cause. I've never and seen so that. And so now go. those who are in the middle, like us, who are just, hey, racism is bad. I don't care who you're attacking yeah. based on the color of their skin or whatever. It's not a good thing. Oh, yeah, sure. No. Now no. you have the left being like, no, nah, we were always okay with Listen, it. Listen, I know that there's a, subjuga a history of subjugation of a huh, certain race. I wouldn't say which because I don't see color. But I know there was like a history of subjugation of this country for that. But like, that's it. But, 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 like, listen, you don't be racist against white people either. I mean, you know, we've had it pretty, we've, we've had our fair share of trifles and tribulations in our time. Did you know that yesterday I spilt the mayonnaise from my sandwich? And it is, it's, it was a, it was the only topping that I had on the sandwich because I am white and I don't like spices and that's my culture and if you say that that's that tastes bad then you're racist against white people anyway my point is i have problems too as a white man we just manipulated you to gain power so yeah spare me the whole thing. slavery thing anyway yeah that was great uh this will be good for the other algorithm i don't have much to say but they didn't even really talk about the movie that much to be honest with you i thought they'd like actually review it but instead they just shot the shit you know like tim pool does with the boys right with the voice. He's such a lame-o. I don't know why people watch him, man. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload. If you uh, enjoy my content, you enjoy what I do, I really appreciate any financial help that I can get. Go to youtube.com slash TTV slash join. You got some awesome benefits such as seeing early videos, awesome emotes that you can use in the comments of YouTube videos, and a sweet badge next to your name. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'd really appreciate if you join. It is cheaper than the cost of a blowjob from your mom. So with all that being said, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.